We are on an epic, absolutely massive Northland food adventure. This is the fifth video out of five we're making. So it's a five part series, just all about the incredible food all over Northland. And what a place to start this one. On a wharf on the Hokianga Harbour, we've come down the Twin Coast Discovery Highway. So we're heading down the west coast today. And this is a special part of the world. There's some beautiful scenery, some great food. I mean, tonight we are staying at a very old, super historic villa. We're gonna be eating flounder directly from the Hokianga Harbour, which is what I'm standing over right now. And then there's heaps more. We're gonna head south through the Waipua Forest. We're just gonna have a stack of good food. We're gonna show you this region, the great food there is. Check out the other videos because this has been a massive series that we've filmed all over Northland. We've had a ball, but we can't wait to get into today's one. I'm gonna check out the end of the wharf first. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Thomas mentioned we're having pātiki or flounder for dinner tonight. This is where we're having dinner and this is also where we're staying for the night. So this is the historic Kohu Kohu Villa. It is an amazing property. It's been around for over 160 years. It actually used to be the offices for the Kauri Mill which was across the road. It is really neat inside. Let's head in. Look at the room that we're sleeping in tonight. It is beautiful. So the couple who own this villa have painstakingly restored and renovated this whole place. And it is stunning. So, you know, some of the floorboards are the original floorboards. So some of the oldest floorboards in Aotearoa. Oh, I can't wait to sleep with this. <laughs> look at this place it's it's neat to explore because there's so many little nooks and crannies and interesting rooms i'm in the sort of the guest lounge room now so you can just chill out in here on the sofas it's so pretty and so this is a, a b and b so you get breakfast and a bed and breakfast but you can do dinner here as well so we're having dinner here cooked by our host d and sean and this is where we get the flounder so it's all lots of little special elements to being here and it's such a neat place to be. All this wood that's all around is just so ancient. There's so much history in this house and I can't wait for the flounder. <laughs> Look at this beautiful dining area. So we're all set up. We've got candlesticks on the table and now we're going to take a quick peek in the kitchen and see what's cooking up. These are our hosts, Dee and Sean and they are cooking us up a feast. What are we having? We are having whole flounder served on a bed of greens with char grilled broccoli mm. and miso dressing. Mm. And I'm accompanying it with my lemon risotto, my preserved lemon risotto, Ooh. homemade preserved lemons. Fabulous. I'm so excited for this flounder. Tell me about it. Well. Because we've got a local fisherman here, there's only two commercial fishermen on the harbour, we feel really confident when we're bringing the flounder out that it's a sustainable fishery and that our guests are getting also what is rumoured to be the best flounder. So even if you go to Kaipara and you're getting flounder there, it's not the same as the flounder we get here. And probably our best part of this is that Craig brings the flounder to us here, so it's a knock on the door, Amazing. fish handed over, we cook it, and then we take it to your table. Oh, I love that. And flounder is such a must eat when you're in the area. How good is this? It's absolute bliss. I've got home cooked meal right in front of me. The fish has come from the Hokianga, so just the water which is 100 metres away. We're staying in this stunning villa hosted by two people who are full of joy, full of welcome. It just honestly couldn't get better. Mmm. Holy moly. Cooked to perfection. It melted in my mouth. The yellow belly flounder is 
specific to the Hokianga. It is so good. If you've never had flounder before, it's a really light, delicate fish. Cooked in butter with a bit of lemon over the top. Oh my goodness. Served with this preserved lemon risotto and then this broccoli. I'm gonna try some of this risotto. Mmm, creamy, tangy from that lemon. Mmm, that is my favorite way to eat broccoli. Charred with this beautiful miso dressing over the top. Sesame seeds, almonds, it's just this, this is like a dream meal in a dream setting. We're so lucky. You have to come here. It's an incredible place, incredible experience. It's so special to be eating in so much history too. Sort of first records of this house. So it's a bit murky about when it truly was first built this house, but looking at sort of 1840, which for Aotearoa is old. That's so much history here and I'm loving it. It's really special with fantastic hosts, great food from just down the road, special place. What a stay in a stunning location, great host, we've just had the most epic breakfast. Back on the road, like, look, there's the harbour, right down there is where that fish came from last night. Come stay here, it's so cool. food journey continues and we're sticking in and around the Hokianga harbour to start off today but to do that we have to cross the harbour and there's no bridges so you get to go on the car ferry so we're going from the north side of the Hokianga to the south side. We've popped off the ferry and we've landed in Rawane. I love this township, it's super charming. And this whole region is so rich in history. So, you know, they say that the Hokianga is where Kupe, the great Polynesian explorer, first landed when he came from the Pacific with the first Maori explorers. And this region in Northland was the heart of Northland's timber industry back in the 1800s. So there's so much to explore and learn about. But first, morning tea, we're going to the classic Boat Shed Cafe for maybe a sweet treat and coffee. The Boat Shed Cafe truly lives up to its name. Hanging over the water. So cool. Watching the car ferry tootle back over to the other side. This is a very peaceful environment. Listen to this. Um, all I can hear is the mullet jumping in the ocean in front of me. <laughs> we ordered a slice of hummingbird cake, so banana and pineapple. I've got my cuppa, we're sitting out over the water. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I love banana cake. It's absolutely delicious. I'm having so much fun on this food roadie. This is a massive five-part series. Travelling all around Northland, and exploring it by food and drink. It is my kind of trip. So there are a bunch of Northland food and drink itineraries. They're all linked in the description below. So you can check them out yourself and create your own road trip. But exploring this region, which I reckon is so underrated when it comes to food. People don't even realize the magic that there is here. And it is so neat exploring it through the food and drink. I am having a time of my life. While this is a huge food journey, it would be remiss of us to ignore the beauty of Northland. The scenery is incredible. We're at the, the, the heads to the Hokianga Harbour now. So where we stayed and when the cafe we've been to is up the harbour, out that way, the sea is raging, this huge spectacular swell coming in. It's really stunning. From ocean to forest, we're standing in the midst of the Waipoa forest, gazing at Tane Mahuta, the largest living kauri tree in New Zealand. He's absolutely magnificent and he is ginormous. We 
We've arrived in Dargaville for a late lunch. Dargaville is the Kumara capital of New Zealand. We're heading to Matiches. This is a place that I've wanted to visit for so long. It's a fish shop. We're heading in for lunch. I can't wait to see what they've got. Look at this place. It's great. It is a rare beast this restaurant it's got this super retro feel it's held on to its roots it feels like you're stepping back in time which is definitely not a bad thing it's so neat i love the setup in here and i cannot wait to have this so this is it's fish and chips basically but it's dine-in which is rare as well so super retro dine-in amazing fish and chips I'm so pumped for this meal. I've just watched Ebony put my fresh pātiki or flounder from the Kaipara Harbour into the hot oil. I am so excited. And I'm getting snapper, so local Northland snapper. So it's turning into a bit of a seafood feast video because Sheena's back on the flounder just like we had last night, but cooked a totally different way. We're getting kumara fries because Dargaville, like Sheena said, kumara capital of New Zealand. So that's sweet potato. Oh, vision jabs. To wash down our FNCs, we ordered a couple of chocolate thick shakes. Sean's just putting the thick shakes on. My mouth is watering. <laughs> Fish and chip restaurants like this are a dying breed and I have wanted to visit Medici's for so long. This fish and chip shop has been here since 1930. So it is an icon. I ordered the last flounder that they had. I know I had it last night, but I just couldn't resist. I had to make the most of being on the west coast. So I've got deep fried flounder, kumara chips, salad cup. Thomas went for fish and chips with a snapper. And then we've got fry bread and raw fish salad and a couple of chocolate thick shakes. Mm hmm I'm so happy right now. Perfectly cooked, mouth in your mouth, super crispy batter. The fish is so fresh. Homemade tartar sauce too. Mm-hmm. The kumara just tastes better in Dargaville. It's really sweet. It's got a little crust on the outside, but soft, sweet on the inside. Mmm. Raw fish salad, fry bread, match made in heaven. Mmm. Yum. Super coconutty, the, the raw fish salad. So there's snapper in there. Tamare, that's Northland snapper. I really like what they're doing here because a lot of it is local where possible. There's a wet fish section, so you can buy fish here as well. Smoked fish, again, it's local smoked fish. What a place. This, this type of restaurant is super rare now, as we keep saying, and these places need to survive. They need to be a thing. And I love that this is here in Northland, that you can come here and have an experience like this, and it's delicious. Look at that. Generous chunks of lemon. That's what you want when you have fish and chips. This is Snapper as well. Again, local. Mm. Delicious. Yum. Fish and chips is a winner. And this place is a winner. That is great. What a way to finish up what has been a huge filming series for us. We've basically done a big loop of the entirety of Northland right up the east coast, loop back around down the west coast. And remember, these are all itineraries that you can do the uh, same as us, but as we've said many times in the videos, we're tip of the iceberg for the places we've ticked off. There are so many great places to, to stop and eat, producers, wineries, cheese places, fish and chip shops, the list goes on. So check out the links down below because it is an absolute joy to do one or all like we have of these itineraries they are all great there is so much cool stuff to discover the landscape the food the people everything about it is epic so watch the rest of the videos if you haven't thank you for watching this one and i cannot wait to finish this and let's not forget the thick shake <laughs> delicious